Hello YouTube, my name is Gauntlet, and today I will analyze the Axis Doctrine in Call of War 1.5. Any country that has this little icon by it, right here, has the Axis Doctrine as its doctrine. And this is usually organized by if a country was part of the Axis during World War II, that it has that doctrine. Or if it was occupied by the Axis during World War II, then it would have that doctrine. There are quite a few exceptions though, like Egypt has the Axis Doctrine even though it fought for the British, and Turkey has the Comintern Doctrine even though it was staunchly anti-communist. So it doesn't always line up, but it generally lines up with how a country aligned itself during World War II. Now let's look at this doctrine in more detail by going to the Call of War forum and looking at their manual for doctrines. I have a link to that manual in the description below. All right, let's take a look at the Axis's general strengths. The Axis gains a 15% bonus to all of its units hit points and a 15% bonus to all of its units of damage output. This means your units will generally outperform your enemy counterparts in 1v1 situations. The exceptions to that are found in the specific unit bonuses under the other doctrines. Like Japan has specific bonuses to its infantry, the Comintern has specific bonuses to its militia, and so on. These general bonuses will be especially helpful to the Axis in the early game against the Allies doctrine and the Comintern doctrine because everyone's armies start the same. They're all infantry except for a couple armor cars and anti-air pieces. So the Axis will have the ability to expand quickly into these two doctrines. Not the Asians so much since the Asians get decent bonuses to their infantry. The only weakness the Axis gets is a 10% to its production cost. This will translate into spending more resources on units and less on your industry, which will cause your economy and your military to take longer to build up as you'll be spending more resources. This translates to a longer build up time for your military because you will have the same upkeep as the Allies and Pan-Asian doctrines, but all of your units are gonna cost more to build. So, Although you might be able to field the same amount of units as the Allies and the same amount of units as the Pan-Asians, given enough time, while you're building up, you are more vulnerable to these other doctrines because they will have larger militaries. That also means that every one of your units means a little bit more to you than these other doctrines. The Axis will have a much harder time replacing their units than the other doctrines, and especially the common turn. You don't want to be trading your units with common turn units. Therefore, the Axis should avoid wars of attrition whenever possible. You should seek quick victories, quick decisive victories in the field, and always pick your battles carefully. Make sure you have the advantage in every battle that you fight. Do not take unnecessary losses. Now let's take a look at the specific strengths the Axis has, and by that I mean of its units. The first one is motorized infantry. This 15% move speed will make it one of the fastest units in the game. At high levels, it will also be able to spot stealth units, so you no longer need armor cars for that role. Motorized infantry can take that over. It will also gain a 15% damage bonus against all infantry units. And by infantry units, I mean any unit that has this armor class. So infantry, anti-tank, anti-air, commandos, paratroopers, all those kinds of stuff. All the soft units. Let's just take a quick look at how motorized infantry level 1 and infantry level 1 compare. Infantry level 1. 3.5, 5.2 for the Axis. It would actually be lower for other doctrines. And motorized infantry, 7.8. 5.2. It also has a slight health point advantage. 
as well. Motorized infantry was already pretty good against infantry targets, but because of this 15% bonus, it's going to be a beast. And that, combined with the fact that it's available at earlier times for the Axis, like I can start building motorized infantry on day one as the Axis, it can be used to devastating effect against your neighbors who don't have it, as it will slaughter the largely infantry armies your enemy has, and they will also have that speed bonus to get from the factory to the front really quickly, and also to reinforce areas that are under threat. Next up is anti-air. 15% damage against heavily armored units. And there's a difference, so heavily armored units are medium tanks, tank destroyers, and heavy tanks. Whereas lightly armored units are everything else like SP artillery, SP anti-air, armored car, light tank, those types of things. So this bonus will allow anti-air to mostly act as a substitute for the anti-tank the Axis has. Not entirely, but this bonus helps that. It also has a good bonus against all aircraft, which will allow it to do a really good job at protecting your stacks against enemy planes, and also to protect your buildings behind your lines from the strategic bombers, and also enemy paratrooper raids. Now for the fan favorite, medium tanks. The 15% speed bonus on the medium tank allows it to have the same speed as all of the other light tanks in the game. When this is paired with motorized infantry, it can be used to launch quick devastating attacks against enemy stacks. And the 10% hit points allows this to soak up more damage that its highly offensive nature will cause it to receive and its earlier availability on day 2 allows Axis powers to gain a powerful tool to counter enemy light tanks and armored cars right away. Next up is a unit that is a new addition to the game, the Attack Bomber. The Attack Bomber itself is a great tool against armored units and also it does pretty well against ships. It gains a 15% damage bonus against infantry units, which makes this a much more viable weapon against infantry than its counterparts in the other doctrines. Other countries would usually have to use tactical bombers to attack infantry targets. It also has a 15% damage bonus against heavy armor, which will allow this unit to decimate medium tanks, tank destroyers, and heavy tanks. And it is also available on day one for Axis powers, giving them a quick way to deal with enemy armored units and artillery. Because artillery separated from stacks is always very vulnerable. Now, for the most popular naval unit in the game, the submarine. Countries with the Axis Doctrine will have subs that gain a 15% damage bonus against all surface ships. This makes Axis subs a really big force to be reckoned with. The 15% speed bonus will also allow convoy raiding to become much easier, especially since convoys in 1.5 are faster and are generally better protected. It also gains a little bit of early availability, which can provide a quick way to gain local naval superiority early on, because other powers, especially the Allies, will be producing countermeasures to your submarines. Moving on, the secret, take a look at the rocket. This gains a 15% damage bonus, which when counted on top of the already general 15% damage bonus, this allows the Axis to use rockets to their highest potential among the other doctrines. They'll get the most bang for their buck with each rocket. Earlier availability can also come in handy if you want to surprise vulnerable enemy air forces on the ground or lonely artillery, then having a rocket on day four will definitely be surprising enough. And right below it, we have the rocket fighter. The poor rocket fighter that no one really uses. This aircraft gets a 15% damage bonus against aircraft, 
and a 15% speed bonus, which in my opinion does make it a viable option for Axis players. However, the poor range does make it hard to use. Level 1 Rocket Fighter only has 300 kilometers of range, and level 2 has 400 kilometers, which is about 100 kilometers less than the fighter that can be researched on the same day, but it also cannot get any higher level. So higher level interceptors like level 5, level 6 will greatly outrange the Rocket Fighter. But I think it still could be used pretty well in Europe and in historical maps where range is decreased and it doesn't matter as much. And I do plan to test it more and see how well I can use it to decimate enemy air forces. So stay tuned for that video, because I definitely want to see the Rocket Fighter get the recognition it deserves. And that is it for the specifics that I'm going to go over for the Axis. Now let's move on to my conclusions. As of right now, I believe the Axis is the epitome of the offensive mobile warfare doctrine, which is commonly known as Blitzkrieg, or the War of Movement which was obviously the intent of Vitro when they designed this doctrine. It will provide a fast and fun playing experience, and I think it will be quite popular. Its medium tanks and motorized infantry will be able to punch holes into enemy lines and exploit the rear areas, quickly taking cores, destroying air bases, and stuff like that. This exploitation, possibly combined with rocket attacks, will allow enemy airfields to be quieted, which will protect the rest of the army from enemy air attack. Because ground attack intervals happen twice as fast as they did in 1.0, while the patrolling intervals stayed the same, and refueling takes longer than it did before, now it's 30 minutes on a level 1 airstrip, whereas before it was 15 minutes, you might be able to complete your land attack battles before your enemy gets the aircraft up to decimate your land units. Or you could just add some SBAA to your fast stacks to provide some protection against enemy aircraft. But because of the stack limits and how they work now, where 10 is the max, for every SBAA you add onto your stack of 10 plus, you're going to be reducing the damage output of that stack. So it will be interesting to see how people balance diversity in their stacks versus pure offensive power. Regular AA and rocket slash regular fighters can also provide some protection against an enemy air force. So once you have the skies clear and your armored formations are able to punch holes through the enemy line, it will be easy to isolate the enemy stacks, surround them, and kill them with your bombers, artillery, and slower units. Try to allow your motorized infantry to attack enemy infantry stacks and use your tanks to kill the enemy armor. And also, use the faster speed of your medium tanks and motorized infantry to avoid enemy heavy tanks. Rather, use your attack bombers to kill those heavily armored targets. This doctrine is all about winning the land war in decisive battles, using air power to support the ground units while the navy is a side branch meant to simply harass enemy convoys and shipping. Focus on the army, not the navy. You will not have the resources to afford a navy until very late in the game because of the higher production cost of all of your units. I believe this doctrine is a great pick for players of all skill levels. That concludes this video. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, leave a like, comment any advice you have, and I will see you on the battlefield.